Well, hello, hello. We're back again. This time we're going to be giving some love to Netflix. Kind of. Um, Netflix has been under fire due to, you know, their announcements of cutting down on certain content and also um, raising the prices on subscriptions. However, they've done a few things that, you know, I agree with. And a couple of them are um, the content that they've been putting out as far as like series and and originals you know it they, they have been good not all of them but they have been uh, i know that i've been enjoying uh, you know they, the addition of it men one two three and four uh they've also added it's kind of like this samurai based or shogun era uh, story born hero something like that uh called uh Rorunin Kenshin. I think that's how you say it. But, you know, that's kind of a side. The other thing is how they've been adding new movies. And not necessarily like that old. Uh, like this movie that I'm going to be talking about today was released back in 2007. So, well, I don't consider that to be that old for a movie, for a movie but, you know. Some older movies you kind of enjoy watching over and over again. And, you know, they're not, you don't always find where to see them. You know, some, sometimes you can find them in the YouTube uh, website under free movies. However, you know, some movies are under like, you have to pay to watch them. Or even if they're in the free movies, I mean, maybe it's not the best. I don't know. I mean, c certainly the addition to the catalog to the netflix catalog helps and especially because you can download them watch them afterwards i mean that's fine and i don't mind that so today we're going to be talking about the bucket list like i said and the bucket list you know some people may be familiar with it but um for those that are not it is in reference to a phrase which says kick the bucket or in other words, uh, to die. And when you make a bucket list, it's basically things that you want to do before you die. And that's what this is about. The list is about these two men, um, Edward and Carter. They live vastly different lives. Edward, he's worked since a young age and has accomplished quite a bit. I mean, he is his own businessman he uh he has if you imagine yourself as you're younger and what you thought that you would be doing if you had a, a lot of money when you were older that's basically edward you know he has the money to travel wherever he wants do whatever he wants um you know he also uh to put it in a in a very family friendly way he also hires certain services that are for personal pleasure there i mean that that's a safe way to say it but he's also kind of lonely and i don't mean that that you see him very depressed i mean in the way that he's an outgoing guy and everything but you only ever see him you don't actually see him with his family carter on the other hand he has also worked since a young age. He was married young. He had kids when he was young. He's extremely bright. I mean, he knows a lot of trivia. In the beginning of the movie, um, one of his co-workers, a younger co-worker, he has an almanac and he's just asking him questions to see if he ha he knows the answer. And so two that I can think of at the top of my head is that he asked him which person is... Ha, um, names start with an H or um, who invented the radio and you know he, he knows I mean he has a lot of interesting trivia knowledge however you know he works as a mechanic not that mechanics are not intelligent but you know for his character he is extremely intelligent I mean more than you can count because he goes on and has trivia for just about anything and everything now 
the way that these two meet on you know uh carter very much different from red where he does have does his family right and he is very close and i want to kind of emphasize this because these are kind of differences that you do see throughout the film apparently carter has been fighting with cancer for years and years we're not told how many but we do know that it's an ongoing problem that he has been treating but hasn't had success in kind of being in remission and out of it edward funny enough he was in like this legal battle with the hospital where they where they are uh, because he is trying to buy the hospital and you know as his own business being the owner however you know he does end up there with him with carter and here's the thing they do kind of when they're told their prognosis when they have their tests done and after like the chemotherapy and the doctor comes in and lets them know that hey you know, you know you don't have that long to live at the very most you have one year which is not good i mean nobody will say that's great and here's the thing it does highlight something that has been going on since a long time and that is that usually doctor usually patients who have the money the care is a little bit different because and this might sound wrong the doctor can afford to be more personable to that patient i know it sounds wrong but what i mean is that we do see a scene that's not far off from reality where you know we never see carter's doctor we we only see the nurse and she'll say oh well i'll let the doctor know as soon as i can and we never do see him but edward's doctor on the other hand you know he goes in he jokes with him and answers his questions leaves and it's not until you know after edward and carter have spent some time together that he does feel very much angry on his behalf and says no doctor you are going to tell him oh but he's not a patient i'm not familiar with his case well you're going to get familiar so the doctor looks over the chart looks over the test results that he has been waiting to hear about for quite a while and tells him the same thing hey you only have a few months to live at the very most one year that and if i can add this as a, as a side note that is a problem and it's not to go to that extreme like you're in the hospital room you're about to die and the doctor's not going to see you but you know even if you look at the medical setting in general people who go to doctor visits they mostly see either the nurse or the medical assistant that is there on staff why because the doctor is seeing all the patients they can and usually that's especially if it's like for primary care but usually it's because you know what they earn is based on how many patients they see and how much gets billed and so many times it becomes more about the quantity rather than the quality of service and that's why you know many patients who go in they might say well i saw a doctor oh what did he say i don't know he didn't say anything well what about the test results or what about this or that he didn't say anything did you tell him about or her yes him or her did you tell them about uh, these other problems oh he didn't listen or they didn't listen or you know there wasn't time or that type of thing so it is a problem and so if anything this whole yes it does become like a business and yes doctors and other people in the medical field have to they need to earn money but there has to be a way where doctors and patients can communicate better with each other and many times it's the doctor not talking to the patient 
But I've rambled long enough on that. That's what got back to the movie. And so regarding the movie, after these two kind of have their death sentence, they do agree on a list of things they want to do. A bucket list. Hence the movie. Hence the title. Now, they put things like skydiving, witnessing something majestical, um, helping a total stranger. Uh, Edward even put in, you know, kissing the most beautiful girl in the world, which is kind of cute. And I'll go back to that in, in a bit. And so they do all of this. And of course, Edward has the money. Of course. Now, they do like the different things that they're going to do. And they get to know each other a little bit more. You know, Carter is open to the real reason that he's on the trip. And it's because after such a long time with his children who are now grown and his daughter who is now auditioning, uh, she's a violinist. But, you know, for a long time, he was a husband. He was the provider, the worker. He was, although his wife also worked, but you know he was that hard worker he was the husband he was the father he was all these things and for a while now he has been feeling kind of not himself who is he what does he want what has he done in life and so in this existential well not existential kind of what i mean to say is that he is in this phase in which he is in the face of death but he wants to know why or who he is and how he got there, but not in what did he do to get cancer, but as in, has it been worth it? Has his, has his life had any meaning? Who is he as himself, you know, as a person? Who is Carter? What is he going to be leaving behind? And that's kind of like this journey to get back in touch with himself. Edward also is open to you know his various marriages, his one only daughter who he's lost contact with because of a certain situation with an ex-boyfriend. I mean, we do see that Edward is open about, and he doesn't say it, but we, you do notice that he's lonely. Edward doesn't have that human connection. Even though he's very outgoing, even though he is, you know, no hold bars when it comes to even flirting with women and all that, he still doesn't have a human connection. So, they end the trip, and when they get back, they kind of ends on a, harsh note because um, you know Carter does take Edward without him knowing to kind of get back in touch with his daughter and that doesn't work out but you know they do make amends I will say that now Carter is the first one to pass away he's the first one to die and that's when Edward comes to realize that you can't he can't live the same way he needs to you know he needs to tie those loose ends in his life and he gets back in touch with his daughter who is already a good woman at this point and has a daughter of her own and this is the part where i mention he kisses the most beautiful girl in the world his granddaughter and he realizes what is important when Edward dies, and Carter says it best, his eyes were closed, his heart was a wide open. So to kind of wrap up with my final thoughts, that phrase has been stuck with me for a long time now. And it's not that I'm, you know, it's not like I'm as old as they are and that I'm going to die soon and I'm reflecting on my life. But it's just worse to kind of keep in mind, you know, eyes closed, heart wide open. You know, even the theme song from John Mayer, Say, where he repeats the line over and over again, say what you need to say. 
it's this movie is very much about you live your life but you don't actually live it you don't coexist with others and that's the thing you need to be open to the experiences you have to be open to that connection with other people there was a discussion that edward and carter had on top of a pyramid where carter was explaining the concept of death uh, according to the egyptians the ancient egyptians in which you evaluate your life based on who you were but who you were to other people as well and that's kind of a good point you know you live your life as an individual but how will other people remember you so not just you know stay on your lane but do what you need to do to live your life and to feel fulfilled and to make other people happy doing what you love if that makes any sense it might sound a little bit philosophical you know if you haven't watched the film watch it it's a good film to watch you can watch it on your own you can watch it with friends with family it's it's funny it does touch serious notes but it is funny um so watch it there's also a joke i'm not gonna kind of go over it because it's worth the watch uh, about a coffee a type of coffee coffee that um, edward likes that is called kopi luwak it's funny so again you'll have to watch that part but still what do you think what do you interpret the meaning of the film to be what does it mean to you if you've already seen it or you know if you haven't watched it you can come back and you know what were your thoughts on it for me it is available this movie is available right now as of posting this uh, video so I'm not sure if it's available everywhere or just in certain places but so if you can watch it I definitely recommend it and that's it that's all I have to say for today take care be kind to those around you because you never know what they're going through and indeed we never know all right see you later Bye-bye.